I'm Todd Clippinger, and welcome to the American Craftsman Workshop. Today, I want to try to demystify door construction for you a little bit. If you've ever thought about been building a door, but been kind of intimidated by the project, it's actually not that hard, guys. I want to tell you right now, it's nothing but the same actions and techniques that you use in the shop to build everything else. So let's take a look at this. This is an actual project that I'm going to be installing tomorrow. And... Um, I don't, I'm sorry I don't have a full construction video. I actually hammered this out pretty quick and was hoping to have been installing it, but the hardware kind of got held up. So as it turns out, I have an extra chance to share this with you. So anyways, this is for a client and it's kind of odd shaped and sized because it goes under a stairwell and to the storage area that we've built in under the stairwell as I'm finishing out a basement for some clients. Um, one of the things is we would have had to custom order the door or build it ourselves. So we chose to build it ourselves. And basically, as you look at this, it's a paint grade project. And this door style is completely based on all the other doors in the basement. So the, the styles, the rails, the top and bottom rails, they're all based on the existing door so that they all match. And it, it tries trying to make it look continuous, even though it's the sod shape. So anyways, the big, the big uh, concern when you're building a door is to have stable stock when you build the frame. Well, for this, I didn't use solid wood. I actually made up my own stock. So what I did was I went and purchased some OSB um, uh, tread material from the lumber yard. This comes 11 and a half inches wide and it's one inch thick and it came in 16 foot long length. And it was only $17. So basically I took whatever my measurements were that I, I had determined for my rails and my styles and I just sort of reverse engineered the size. So once I wrapped it out and milled it all down, I had a core with a half inch on each side of the core for the, for the edges. And then I had um, a face that, that total thickness came to one and three eighths inch. So basically you have the one inch core and then just build the thickness up of the two faces to equal one and three eighths inches. Now it's kind of important that when you put your faces on, that they, they're basically the same thickness because you want even, even stress on both sides of that to maintain a straight uh, stock. So what this does is it produces straight, stable, dimensionally stable material instead of solid wood, which is going to move a lot and the door might come apart on you. Now for the center panel, I chose Baltic birch plywood. And, and then so what I did is this is all constructed with tongue and groove. So there's nothing, there's nothing special about this, guys. This is nothing but big chunks of wood that I've put together with tongue and groove construction. Super easy. First thing I did was I cut the groove on the table saw. To determine that, I took my plywood and I used that as my gauge and I used my dado set and adjusted the fence until when I ran the piece through this uh, on each side against the fence that it came out to just a perfect fit. And that determined the groove. I decided that I wanted my tongues uh, from the joining pieces to, to, to go in three quarters of an inch. I like three quarters of an inch, got a nice firm fit. And so basically after I cut my, my grooves, just make the tongues fit. Now what you want to do is fit your tongues. So they're just a hair short of the bottom of the groove and that'll keep them from being, uh, uh, keep your, if, if it's too tight, it might keep your joint from coming together right here. Now, Here's something that's kind of special. If you're working on a paint grade door, guys, there's a lot of pressure that's off because it's real easy to do repairs. I'm going to show you why. Because the secret of the trades is to use Bondo. Basically, I did a real tight fit on this center panel because I want it to be integral to the structure and add strength. This whole panel is glued in. It's not floating in the frame. And why I did that is because we're going to put shelving on the back and load it up with canned goods. And I wanted this door extra strong. I didn't want just the frame to have strength, but I wanted added strength by the center panel. So when I made my tolerance was really tight, it dry fitted nice, but then I, I didn't quite, I was, for some reason, this just didn't come together when I added the glue. So a little frustrating, but not a big deal. I didn't sweat it. Paint grade, if it was stain grade, everything would have to fit real perfect or it'd be a mess. But anyways, basically I put a little Bondo on, sand it off when I did my final sanding and it, it is perfect. Now let me show you something. I'm going to show you one of my big sins on the inside of the door as I flip it around. I want you to take note 
So down at the bottom, see that bottom rail? If I, I should have made the stock longer because that would allow me to cut off any snipe at the end. As it was, I went a little shorter on my stock. I ended up with snipe at the end. And so with that snipe, because it made the piece a little bit thinner, it didn't, it didn't have the same elevation as the style when I put the two pieces together. But guess what? I'm not gonna sweat it because on paint grade, I can just bondo it up, sand it off smooth, and it's not a big deal. You know what? Even if that was on the outside, I know that wouldn't even show once it's primed and painted. It would be perfect. So, so the point is, we all make mistakes, and guess what? If it's paint grade, take the stress off, guys. Super easy repairs. And um, now, when it comes to the center panel, you're gonna, once you put that in, once you put that in, it's just, it's just square in the middle, so basically you wanna trim that out with something nice, a little, a little trim detail. So the profile that I came up with actually was simply based on all the other existing doors in the basement. But when I milled those pieces um, and I went to cut them, you know, what you wanna do is make a little um, uh, uh, zero clearance table that's an auxiliary fence to your, to your miter saw. And actually I don't use, I don't use little Japanese saws and, and hand miter boxes and stuff. I cut everything on, on the miter saw, on the power tools and and uh, as you can see, if you take a look at the, the little the, the cutoff table for the little pieces, I get super clean cuts, and it, it creates the little zero uh, clearance uh, fence at the back, and it, everything comes out just perfect. And it's I like doing my cuts on the on the on the power tools. That's where uh, my background is is uh, in the field remodeling, and that's where I developed all my skills and my skill set. So that's what I'm used to the most. As you can see, my miters they come together really good. Uh, on those small cuts using that auxiliary fence. And you know what? That auxiliary fence, nothing special. You just, a piece of wood glued onto a piece of plywood. You use it till it's used up, throw it away, make another one. Not a big deal. Don't make it complicated, guys. So, uh, now one other thing, because this has an OSB core and it's a short door, you're gonna see the end of this right here and, and it's, kind of, it's kind of rough. So if it was a tall, full, full height door, I wouldn't worry about it, but as it is, we're going to go back to the Bondo, add some Bondo right here, sand it off smooth, and it comes out super smooth when it's painted. Nobody will see it. So this is ready to install. The hinges have to be put on. There's plenty of uh, solid wood on the edges, and um, uh, there's plenty of uh, meat there then for the screw from the hinges to, to grab into and to hang the door properly. Also, lots of wood when I go to mortise in the, the latch, then also uh, there's a good amount of wood there. So some of those dimensions, you guys are just gonna have to figure out what makes you feel the best and most secure about what you're doing. Now, when you do your glue ups of solid wood to OSB, you're gonna wanna use sizing and kind of prime up that OSB, load it up with some of that uh, sizing, which is glue and water, 50-50%. Load that up and then go back, add your glue, to the two pieces and put it together and they will not come apart. I use tight bond two and not a big deal. Actually two, uh, just to let you know, when I glue all this stuff up, I put it in my vacuum press, but you don't need anything special. Actually, I could have, I could have taken this when I glued my faces on, put it right here on the table and probably be a good idea to put another call board on top and clamp that all down, producing even pressure. The full length of this table is really nice and flat. It's not even a torsion box. You don't need one, you just need a flat top. And it doesn't take a torsion box to achieve that. So anyways, all these pieces could have been laid out on the edge of this table so I could have clamped it right to the table and made them nice and flat and then produced all this stock. Once again, all you're doing is, is milling some wood, gluing it onto the, the edges of the OSB and the face of the OSB, and you're creating nice stable stock. That nice stable stock, Nothing special for the joinery. It's simple tongue and groove. You just do it at the table saw. Nothing special going on there, guys. And then uh, when you clamp it up, you know how you get a square door? Produce square cuts. And when you glue it all and, and you clamp it together, it, it squares itself up. So it's, it's really easy, guys. So anyways, that, that is really it for door construction. I want you to think about that. Everything you've been doing on all your other projects is exactly what you do for this. It's not a big deal. So anyways, if you do go stain grade, things, you'll have to be a little bit more meticulous to make sure your joints coming together because you can't get away with the Bondo. 
So if you're doing paint grade stuff though, feel free. Hey, you know what? If this was a tall door and I wanted an extra rail in here, it's not a big deal. All I would have done is made another rail and put it right in here. It would have been super easy to do. And this panel would have been broken into twos or thirds or if it was a five panel or six panel door, it's all the same. It's, it's really easy, guys. So don't overcomplicate things. That's sort of the message of this video is don't make it complicated. It's still, it's still all simple joinery and the pieces are just a little bit bigger. That's really all it comes down to. So anyways, I'm gonna give you the confidence to get out, in the pro out to the shop and build Joe's projects. A lot of times, just stop overthinking it and enjoy yourself and realize, just break it down to the manageable pieces and understand it's simple joinery, it's simple milling, it's simple cutting on the miter saw and you assemble the pieces and you got a door. Oh, hey, one more thing. If you've got an angle like this, always make sure you dissect that angle exactly in half because if, if, if you cut it off center, one side's gonna be short, one side's gonna be a little bit long and they won't mate perfectly. You have to find the center of that angle and cut it perfectly in half to get those pieces to mate right there. And that way, as you can see, the pieces here, they come together perfectly. So anyways, that's all I have for you. Have the courage, get out there, build, and push your limits. Anyways, until next time, be safe in your own shop. This is Sage. She's our new girl. Yeah. <laughs>